Welcome to lecture 5 e energy efficient bufferless NOC routers. We have seen that network on chip routers consists of virtual channels or input buffers which are an integral component of them where packets will come and reside until arbitration process is been over. During port conflicts and congestion, it is the presence of these buffers that will help the packets to reside. But we all know that buffers are power hungry electronic components. The more the number of buffers, the functional unit is going to consume more power. So, there is another line of thought in the NOC architecture domain, can we reduce buffers or can we think of bufferless designs. So, few works are already been done on energy efficient bufferless network on chip routers. So, this lecture and the next lecture is specially focusing on can you design deflection routers, a special category of NOC routers where packets will move out of router in every cycle, there is no provision to keep the packet for longer duration of time. Since they are not having buffers or they have reduced the number of buffers, it is more energy efficient than conventional input buffered NOC routers. So, in today's lecture, we will be focusing on bufferless NOC routers. Let us go and try to understand what is the architecture of bufferless router? We know that this is the general structure of an NOC router where we are going to have buffers here which we call it as virtual channels and we have a crossbar through which it goes. So, flits stay in virtual channel buffers whenever there are port conflict and these buffers are going to consume much of your power. So, these buffers are buffer, buffer hungry. Buffers are power hungry circuits. If you look at from a different perspective, from the buffers, the credit flows to the upstream. So, credit basically means number of free buffers inside your virtual channels. And once you pass the credit to upstream, your packets are going to come and reside inside the buffers and then these packets will move to the corresponding output channel based upon the control logic that is implemented in the router. So, buffers are an integral part of existing NOC routers because buffers are going to hold your packets. Now, bufferless deflection routing is a concept where input buffers are eliminated. So, how is it possible? Flits are buffered in pipeline latches and network links. This is the conventional structure where we have, we can see that buffers are there. You can see that buffers are there and these are called the virtual channels. Now, with bufferless design, we are going to eliminate the input buffers and going to put latches and this is what is known as deflection routing logic. Now, how the deflection routing logic is basically going to work? When you have two packets, they are contending for the same link. One is given the desired link and the other packet is deflected. Consider the diagram where we could see that there are two sources. One is shown by the red color node, other one is shown by the blue color node, both the red and the blue has the destination which is marked as green. So, when you apply XY routing, our conventional routing algorithm, we can see that the packet from the red is going to travel like this and packet from blue also is going to travel like this and at this junction point, they both are competing for the same output. The same output is south. When you have a scenario like this, then if buffers are not there, out of the two flits, one flit is going to get the desired port, the other one will not get. In conventional NOC routers, the flit that did not get the desired output port has to wait there in the buffer until you get the desired output port probably in the subsequent cycles. Let us see what happens here. Let us say there are two packets, the red packet and the blue packet, both are traveling together 
at one particular clock cycle they both reach the central router from which by applying some priority mechanism let us say red was selected as the winner so red will get the productive port eventually blue is deflected away and because of the peculiar structure blue will also reach the destination so one of the packet will get productive port and the other packet has to be deflected away deflection means we are forwarding the packet in a non productive direction since it is a mesh topology even though you are going away from your destination maybe at the adjacent routers at the next routers you can still come back in the productive path so the idea of bufferless deflection router is when two packets are competing for the same link one of the packet is given the desired link and the second packet is deflected away what is the role of buffers in noc so we know that buffers are really necessary for high network throughput because this your buffers are going to hold your packets so when you have more number of buffers that is available inside a network we can accommodate more packets in the network more the number of buffers more will be the throughput of the network but buffers are going to increase the total available band in the network now you could see that this is a graph where the x axis is injection rate injection rate means the number of packets that are entering into the network per cycle and the y axis is called average packet latency when you increase the injection rate naturally the number of packets that are going to enter into the router is going to increase when you increase the injection rate naturally the load will increase packets will compete each other so beyond a point you can see that the latency also increases when you have large number of buffers that is been pointed out by the green chart even if you increase packet injection rate we are not going to see any increase in the latency but after some time you could see that latency is also going to increase but look at the case if you don't have any buffers then you are going to saturate early the point where the latency is going into an exponential decrease or a sudden increase is known as injection rate so we can see that whenever we we have very less number of buffers the network is saturating early when you have more number of buffers the network is going to saturate late that means network can accommodate more number of packets so buffers are going to play a significant role in the performance of an noc more number of buffers more packets can be accommodated more packets can make forward progress when you don't have buffer network will get saturated early now this is the diagram which we have seen so far where if you have buffers you can see that this get stretched little bit now we will try to understand how much throughput we will lose if you are going for a buffered design versus a bufferless design how much throughput we will lose if you are shifting to bufferless how much is the latency affected is there is a drastic decrease in the latency or up to what injection rates can we use bufferless routing are there realistic scenarios in which noc is operated at injection rates below the threshold so we wanted to know in a real time application what are going to be the injection rate are they suitable for bufferless or can still or we have to go for buffered design and once you get rid of buffers we are going to have saving in terms of energy area how much area or energy savings that we get so these are the typical design questions that we have when we talk about bufferless network on chip let us try to understand bufferless routing from a different perspective so what happens always forward an incoming fleet to some outgoing port that's the idea whatever fleets you are going to receive these fleets have to be forwarded to some output port if no productive direction is available then send that fleet to some other direction that is why the fleet is called deflected and this concept is also known as hot potato routing on the left side of the slide you can see that there is a buffered router where i can accommodate fleets and you can see various direction consider the case that 
you are going to have two fluids reaching the router exactly at the same time. Now, when two fluids are reaching, one of them will get a productive port. Let us say we wanted to go to north direction, so that moves to the north. The other one is buffered here, so the fluid is buffered. That is the advantage of buffered. Now, this is what it happens. Look on the right hand side where we do not have buffers. Now, two fluids are going to come. One will get the north port. Since there is no buffer to accommodate the second fluid, it is getting deflected away. So, the fluid is going to get deflected. That is the basic difference. So, as long as you have buffer, those fluids which are not getting productive port are going to be deflected away. Now, how this concept is going to work? This is your traditional input buffered virtual channel router. We are trying to get rid of the virtual channels. And if the virtual channel is not there, the credit outflow is also not required. And we can get rid of this control logic, the traditional one. And that has to be replaced with a fleet ranking policy and a port allocation policy. So, what do you mean by fleet ranking? We have to create a ranking over all the incoming fleets. Whatever fleets we are going to receive inside a router, we have to order them. This is the highest rank fleet. This one is the next highest ranked fleet. Like that, we are going to order the entire fleets in some order. Now, after the ordering, the next thing is called port prioritization. For a given fleet of a specific rank, we are going to find out what is the best free output port. So, there are two stages. First is called fleet ranking. Rank the fleets based upon the order. If from among the fleet that is going to have the highest rank, pick that fleet and try to assign a port to that fleet based upon its preference. So, it is a sequential anchoring order. You have to apply this for each of the fleets. So, we are trying to get rid of buffers. We are trying to get rid of the credit system that tells from one router to another how many buffers are available. That credit system is also eliminated. There is no need for virtual channel allocation and switch allocation. And what we need is, we have to rank the flits. Based on the ranking, we have to pick each flit from the best ranking onwards and try to assign them ports. In bufferless routing, each flit is routed independently because we do not have any guarantee that the flits are going, the flits of a same packet may get the productive port at the same time. So, flits are independently routed and we have to take care of all the design issues and implementation issues in making sure that the fleets are reaching the destination. Second one is oldest fleet ranking. Priority is based on the oldest fleet. Assign fleet to productive port if possible. So, wherever possible once you are going to assign the port, you have to give a port that is productive to the fleet. And the next one, if you cannot get a productive port, then also we are going to give the fleet a port. And that is what is called the deflection port. And flow control is uh, completely local. So, we are not going to look at adjacent routers, whether do you have buffer available. Because since the whole router is going to work without routers, there is no need to have a handshake mechanism between the adjacent router. So, flow control is completely a local thing. Now, when you inject, we have to make sure that there exists. So, injection is possible only when one of the input port is free. So, when you have a router with the four neighboring directions connected and there is a local fleet that is going to be injected and the locally injecting fleet, that injection is possible because for him anyway, it should get one of the uh, four neighboring direction. So, when you have a scenario where there are four fleets coming from four of its neighbors, and then you have a local fleet that is to be injected, then it is not possible because the local injected fleet has to get one among the orthogonal directions, north, south, east or west. So, this local injection is possible only if one of the input channel is idle. Now, this makes sure that in the case of uh, a bufferless router known as BLESS, Deadlocks are not there because every fleet is moving. There is no dependency on any buffers. I am not looking for a buffer to be available. And we have absence of live lock also. So, how will you make sure that live lock is not happening? 
we are always prioritizing one fleet and that is the oldest fleet. So once you have the oldest fleet, if the oldest fleet is moving or it's making progress, at some point of time, every fleet will become the oldest in the network. And once you are oldest in the network, you are no longer deflected. So I wanted to just emphasize on two aspects of bufferless routing. First one is it won't create any deadlock. Deadlock is happening because there exists a cyclic dependency for resources. One router has to wait for other router to get a buffer. Since the concept of buffer itself is totally eliminated in the case of bufferless deflection routing, a router, a packet inside a router is not waiting for availability of a buffer in the downstream router. So there is no deadlock. And live lock is eliminated by virtue of oldest fleet highest priority routing. Oldest fleet will always get the productive port. And since everybody will become the oldest fleet in the system at some point of time, and once you become the oldest fleet, then there are no more deflections at all. What are the advantages and disadvantages of BLESS, where BLESS stands for bufferless routing? No buffers and it's strictly local flow control, so no kind of handshake mechanism is required. That's no credit flow, no virtual channel designs, and the router is fairly simple. So this makes sure that it's a simple router design. No deadlocks and live locks, what we have seen. And we have a bit of adaptivity because packets are deflected around congested areas. So when you see that certain port is congested, the fleets are not going to move in that. Because of the deflection mechanism, I could bend around the point of deflection. And that gives you a bit of adaptivity. And surely, since we are getting rid of buffers, rotors area is being reduced. Nothing we are going to gain without sacrificing something. So let us try to see what are the disadvantages. One is surely the packets are going to have a slightly higher average packet latency. This is because of the fact that sometimes packet may have to get deflected. So they will take more number of hopes to reach the destination. So then the latency of the packet is going to increase. And second one is the reduced bandwidth since you don't have buffers. Number of packets that can be accommodated in the network is going to be less. That will reduce the bandwidth and increase the buffering at the receiver for reassembly. Since different fleet inside the same packet are independently routed, we need to have some kind of routing information, basic routing information available in each of these fleet. So the fleets are going to reach the receiver in out of order. So some kind of a reassembly mechanism is needed in the receiver such that I can regroup the packet together. And you have to find out the header information at each fleet. So that's what I mentioned. Since each of the fleet is independently routed, there should be a mechanism which will help us to, to ensure that some kind of basic information is available regarding routing. That means basic header information should be available in each of the fleet. And this whole setup works with finding out who is oldest fleet in the system and he is being given guaranteed progress in the productive port. But finding out the oldest fleet is going to be a bit of complex because it involves a sorting operation. We will see that and quality of service become difficult because a lot of packets will get deflected. Sometimes you may be a very critical packet but you are the oldest fleet in the system. You, you may not be an oldest fleet in the system then it gets deflected. Now live log freedom in BLESS, how are you going to guarantee that? So what stop a fleet from deflecting forever? So we, when we are moving around the system forever, that is what is called its live lock. So how can you ensure that if you get rid of buffers, that is going to save from live lock issue also? All fleets has to be time stamped. So there need to be a total ordering. Older fleets are assigned to the directory ports and total order among the fleets. So let's say these are the fleets that is there. So the oldest fleet in the system, he will surely get guaranteed progress. And whoever is newly injected into the system, they may be having the lowest priority. As time progresses, each of the newly created fleets will become the oldest one in the system. And then onwards, it is going to have guaranteed progress. But what is going to be the cost associated with this operation? That is what we are going to see. So the idea of live log freedom is done with, there should be a total ordering of the fleets based upon their age. And the oldest fleet is going to get productive port always. 
Now, in order to sort four fluids, so let us say these are the four fluids that we are going to have, this blue, green, red and this dark blue, the four different fluids that you can see it on the slide and uh, routers must sort fluids by age. So, you need to have a long latency sort network. So, in order to sort four fluids, so essentially we are having four values. Let us say the number that is represented here represents the time at which these fluids are generated into the packet. So, you can see that this blue fluid, the first one, it is having time stamp creation of 4. That means, it was created at time unit 4, whereas green was created at time unit 1, red at 2 and this blue at 3. So, lower this number, that means, they are the oldest one. So, it is a three stage sort network. The first two are being compared together. The larger one is going to come down. Whereas, in the case of second one, the larger one is going up and then this second level of comparison is also going to do a similar process like this and then we have the third level wherein the larger numbers will come to one end and smaller numbers are going to see at the other end. So, by virtue of this, you can see that now it is totally ordered. So, we had a different set of totally uh, an unsorted set on one end of the sorting network, it is a three stage sorting network. Once you move through all these three stages, then at the end what we can see that the fluids are already in the sorted order. But this is an expensive process. Age based priority is going to be expensive because of this following factor. So, after the sorting, fluids assigned to output ports in priority order. Port assignment of a younger fleet is always dependent on what is the port that is assigned to the older fleets. Because we have only 5 ports that is available inside a router, north, south, east, west and local. You take the highest priority fleet and give them the desired port. Once you have given one of the port to them, then only 4 more ports are available. So, the next highest priority, the youngest fleet or the next younger fleet can choose only from this four, he may be given one among that. So, as you come to the youngest fleets, they will be available only with some set of ports, very few number of ports and then they may not want those ports, there may be non-productive ports leading to deflection. So, port assignment of younger fleets always depend on that of older fleets. So, what is the, what are all the ports that are left behind after the older fleets are been allocated? And this can be done only with a sequential dependence on port allocation. So, consider this case, let us say you have your uh, blue fit that is highest in the age and the blue fleet is going to ask for the, the green fleet is going to ask for east. Since he is the highest priority fleet, the green fleet is going to get the east. So, it is granted. Now, we have the second fleet that is red whatever is available since east is already been assigned now we have left with only north south and west that is what is been shown there but the red fleet is going to ask for is that is his highest priority fleet highest priority direction so after the green is assigned with east if anybody ask for east east is not possible so we have your red fleet requesting for east east cannot be given let us say arbitrarily north is been given. So, red is assigned with north. Now, whatever is pending, it is pending is only south and west is pending. Now, we are going to consult the next highest priority. This is going to be the next highest priority that is looking for south. Yes, south is available. So, that is been granted. Fleet 3 is given with south and whatever is balanced, balance is west and the last one is looking for south. But no chance, south is no longer available. So, what I can give? I can give it only on the west. So, if you look at this flow that is there, the very first fleet is asking for a port, it will get that. For after port allocation, whatever is the ports that is available, that only is passed on to the next fleet. So, the processing of the second fleet is possible only after the first fleet is given with a port. Similarly, the processing of the third fleet can be done only after port allocation is done for the first fleet and the second fleet in terms of priority order. That means, there exists a sequential dependence because the output of the nth priority fleet 
is to be done only after knowing what are the output ports that are available after satisfying the first n flits. So, how it has been done? You have a priority sorting circuit that we have sun which will sort the flits and followed by you have a port allocator which is sequentially that is being connected. So, overall deflection routing logic what we have seen which includes a flit ranking circuit which is known as a priority sort and a port allocator is based on oldest fleet. So, overall this is going to take a longer critical path than your conventional buffered router. So, can we make it cheaper while guaranteeing the live log freedom that is what we are going to see next. So, this is a work that is already been published uh, some 5 to 6 years before and we will give you the link for this published work also. It is a golden fleet concept is trying to be introduced here. So, what do you have to do? This is typically what is been done. Newer traffic are going to get lower priority and older fleets are going to have the highest priority and uh, we form a total order. So, do you really want a total order? No total order is needed. It is enough to pick one of the fleets that is what we are going to do. Pick one of this fleet and call him as golden and we have to make sure that is there and all others are rest. So, it is golden versus rest. So, we are not going to sort the entire fleets. We are going to pick one of the fleet as golden. All others are non-golden. This is not such a complex kind of an operation like what we have seen in a three-stage sorting network. A three-stage sorting network is not required in this context. So, one fleet is being picked. Ensure that after some time, all the other guys are also going to be picked. So, now you can see that the first one has reached destination. Now, from among the remaining fleets that is available, you are going to pick this next fleet. So, the next fleet is eventually that also will reach destination. Once that becomes golden, you are making progress. Now, you choose the next fleet to become golden. So, ensure that any fleet is eventually picked up. Now, what is the golden fleet concept? We only need to properly route the golden fleet. The golden fleet is now not going to be deflected. And so, we do not want a priority sorting circuit and a port allocator. No need for a full sorting circuit. Second optimization, no need for a sequential port allocation. We can go for a parallel port allocation. So, these are the two changes that we are going to bring on this. So, how are you going to work with a golden packet concept? So, how will you route a golden fleet if you have a two input router? So, step one. From among the two fleets that is coming to a router, pick the winning fleet. Winning fleet is typically golden. So, if you have one of the fleet is golden, that is going to be the winning fleet. If none of the fleets are golden, then pick anybody by random. Step 2, whoever is the winning fleet, give them the desired output port. The other one has to be deflected away and golden fleets will always make a route that is going to be progressing. So, consider the case that we have a fleet F and a fleet G that is going to come to this router. G is the golden fleet and F is the non-golden fleet. So, once you have two fleets that is coming a router, the golden fleet is given the productive port. Let us say the golden fleet wants this as the output port. The golden fleet is granted that. Automatically, the other fleet is being given the other output port. Now, let us see a scenario where one of the fleet or both the fleets are not golden. So, consider two fleets F and H, let us say both are not golden. Let us say I am randomly picking H as the winning fleet. So, H is getting the productive direction whatever H wants and F will automatically assign to the other one. So, picking a winning fleet, if both the fleets are non-golden, pick somebody as a winner by random. If one of the fleet is golden, the golden fleet is going to be winner. Winner always get a productive port, the loser always get the deflected port. Now, golden fleet routing. So, what we are going to do is we are going to have four blocks which is called a permuter block, it is called a permutation deflection network. Deflection is taken as a distributed decision. So, each block make decisions independently. So, consider this is the parallel port allocation scheme. The sequential port allocator is eliminated with a parallel port allocation scheme. These are the fleets that is coming from north, east, south and west input direction and what you see on the right side are the fleets that are coming from 
north, south, east and west of the output ports. Now, look here how we are going to have this. Let us say this is the golden fleet that we are going to talk about and the golden fleets wanted to go to this output port. Let us say the red fleet wanted to go to the same output port there. So, the golden fleet and the red fleet they both are looking for the same output port. This blue fleet is essentially trying for this output port and the slight blue is looking for this output port. So, what you see on the right hand side is basically the, the desired direction for each of this port. And the fleet that is coming from the west input is the golden. Now, consider let us say what happens. In the first permuter, since both the fleets are non golden, one is being chosen by random. So, red is the winner, and red wanted to go to this is the direction that the red is looking for. Since red wanted to go to an output port that is connected to the bottom end of the permuter, so red wanted to go to this output port. So, as far as the first router is concerned, the red should move into this block. So, when red is looking for that block, blue automatically goes to this direction. So, I will repeat once again as this is a bit tricky to understand. In the first permuter, that is what we are going to see now. This is the first permuter. In the permuter, there are two fleets that are coming. Both are non-golden fleets and by random, let us say red is the winner. We look for what is the desired output port for red. Red output lies in this port. Red actually wants this as the output. In order to reach that, the fleet has to reach this permuter block. So, eventually red has to come down. Once red is coming down, then the other fleet that is a blue fleet do not have any other choice because red is going to take the path. This path is going to be used by red. So, blue has no other choice. Blue has to move through this path. Now, when you consider the second one. So, the red is going to come like that. Now, consider the second permuter that is there down. Here we have one of the fleet that is golden. So, golden fleet wanted to go to this direction that is the direction that is requested by the golden. So, this golden fleet will travel straight. There is no swapping that is required. The other blue fleet is going to take the upward direction. So, what I have mentioned here is the golden fleet is going to take up a path like this. This is the golden's path. So, the fleet will move straight like this. Now, after that, the appropriate fleet will reach the second stage of the permuter. Now, in the second stage, let us say blue is going to win because both the input fleets both are non golden. Now, we will assume that from among the available one, this blue is the winner and blue wanted to come down to this direction. So, once blue is going to give be given that direction, automatically the light blue has to go up. There is a swap that happens and the fleet gets themselves exchanged. Now, what happens at the bottom end where the golden fleet is involved? Golden fleet wanted to get this output port. So, that is output port what the golden fleet is requesting for. So, golden fleet will get it, there is no swap, the red fleet is going to get deflected. So, this is the fleet that gets deflected. So, now what we have to understand is the permutation deflection network will consist of two permuter stage 1 parallelly, they will work parallelly. After that, we have two more permuters that is stage 2. So, this whole thing is going to be stage 1 and this whole thing is going to be stage 2. Both the units of stage 1 are going to work parallelly. Similarly, both the units at stage 2 is going to work parallelly. So, rather than a sequential port allocation, now we have parallel port allocation that is happening. This parallel port allocation works because we are not looking for a total order of fleets. We are only looking for a golden fleet and the rest. So, what we are going to achieve 
with the whole thing is whatever we are having so what we have we are going to replace the priority sorting and the port allocator with a permutation deflection network. So, a work was published by Chris Fallin et al. in High Performance Computer Architecture Conference in 2011, which was trying to get rid of the issues that is associated with the bus router, the sorting network and the sequential port allocation. They have completely been removing them and coming up with a routers whose name is called chipper. So, let us try to understand how this chipper router works. These are the four directions that you see. It is the north, south, east and west are the four input directions and then we have the north, south, east and west as the output directions. So, the very first is unit inside the router pipeline is the eject and the inject unit. We have seen that in the conventional NOC router, you have buffers in the input, so the packets will come and stay in the buffers and then you have the routing logic, the virtual channel allocator logic and the switch allocator logic followed by the crossbar. So, here it is totally different thing, we are going to have an early eject state. The first operation that a router does when it gets a couple of flits is try to see whether any of the flit is to be ejected to the local port. If so, remove that flit from the router pipeline and that is known as early ejection. Similarly, we have an injection also to be done. So, once the ejection is over, then you are going to inject the newly created packets. In a tiled chip multicore processors, packets are injected whenever you have to send a, a flit into the router and that happens whenever there are cache misses. So, cache misses are recorded in this miss buffers, MSHR, miss service handling, miss status holding registers and injection suppression happens whenever the input port is busy. So, here the idea is I cannot inject any flit if all the input buffers are full. We have to see that a flit that is going to be injected has to occupy one among this channel. So, if all these channels are going to be full or containing some valid flits, then I cannot inject. So, injection is possible in a bufferless deflection router only if one of the input channel is idle. So, if you get four flits through all the four direction, injection is not possible. Or if at least one of the channel is empty, then injection is possible. So, that is why we are keeping ejection at very early in the pipeline. So, if there is a flit to be ejected, surely that channel from which the flit is ejected is empty, which gives space for the newly injected flits. So, injection suppression happens during busy inputs and that will lead to starvation. And the right side is the second stage. So, this is basically your stage 1, the first cycle of the router and what you see second that is a permutation deflection network and this is acting as a very fast unit that is your stage 2. So, it is basically a two cycle router. When you work in chipper, chipper is going to forward all the packets in two cycle. In cycle number 1, you perform the ejection and ejection. In cycle number 2, you are going to perform permutation deflection network or basically it is a port allocation. So, this parallel deflection logic, it is what we have seen in the chipper. Let us say these are going to be the priority that is being shown. We have highest priority for red and going to the lowest priority and red and blue, they wanted to go to north, the black wanted to go to south output port and uh, this magenta wanted to go to uh, the west output port. We have seen what is the logic, two flits are coming together based upon the priority, some of them are getting swapped and they reach the second stage and uh, now you see the red got the desired port, so red is happy. This magenta also got the desired one, so they are also happy, whereas the blue and black, they did not get the desired output port. So, that lead to a scenario that some of the flits may get deflected. So, the main problem that is associated with the chipper design is lot of flits will may get deflected whenever all the input ports are busy with packets. So, when you have too many packets, they may compete for same output port and some of the flits may get deflected. So, this problem is very severe when you go to higher injection rates. When you have higher injection rates means more packets are coming into the network and more flits are going to travel through network, more of them will compete and leading to higher deflection. And when you have higher deflection, a flit is going to travel more distance it is going to take more number of hopes before it is reaching the destination. 
So, in that context, the average latency of the fleet is also going to be higher. Now, this is the results that is being uh, quoted by the authors of the cheaper paper. The left hand side, where the blue graphs are showing what is a normalized router area. So, in architecture research, especially in the case of uh, network on chip, how will you know that if you wanted to propose a new router micro architecture, how will you prove that that new router micro architecture is going to save more area or space or power, whatever. The concept that is being used is we have to implement the router in terms of a hardware description language like VHDL or Verilog. So, once you design your router in this hardware description language, do the synthesis and get the hardware synthesis reports and uh, they are going to normalize. So, if you are using a virtual channel router and uh, let us say that is going to take one unit area, then plus is going to consume roughly up to 0 0.6 around that area, even chipper is also going to consume more or less the same area. So, in terms of area of a router, we can see that plus uh, and chipper is able to reduce substantially, close to 36 percent is the savings what the authors of uh, this proposed work of chipper has achieved. But now, you have to understand that how complex is the circuit and that is what is known as critical path. How will you obtain critical path? Here also, once we implement our design, this design has to be synthesized and we have to get the maximum combinational delay, the number of gates that come in the maximum combinational delay path. It is what is known as the critical path. So, how much time it takes for this router to, to process its input? So, this is also normalized to buffer. If the buffer is going to take 1 unit of time, then your plus is taking roughly up to 1.4 above. But cheaper is comparable, cheaper is slightly above, but cheaper is comparable to that of uh, the buffered router. So, this is only 1.6 lakhs percent reduction, but here the critical path is reduced by 29 percent. What does it mean? It is more or less same that of buffered. So, how much reduction we are or how are we going to get reduction? We are eliminating the parallel sorting that the, the sorting circuit, the three stage sorting circuit. There is no total ordering that is required and the second operation is rather than going for a sequential port allocation, we are coming up with a parallel port allocation called permutation deflection logic. So, the golden fleet concept together with permutation deflection logic is responsible for the reduction of 29 percent of routers areas critical path. The meaning is a router or an NOC with a cheaper router can operate 29.1 percent times faster clock than an NOC that is working with the bus router. They have shown a couple of results what they have got. They have taken a 64 core tiled chip multi core processors where some benchmarks are run. The x axis shows what are the various benchmarks and some of the benchmarks are mixes. So, they ran probably 32 of them with one application, the remaining 32 core is with other application. So, these are all the workloads that they, they are going to consider and the x, y axis is basically weighted speed up. So, if you have 64 cores, uh, the maximum weighted speed up that you are going to get is 64 and you can see that the, the, the red one or the brown one rather, it is a bus router, the green one is cheaper and the blue one is buffered. So, the speed up that you are going to achieve is slowly going to come down, that is what you can see that there exists then and this is the average that is going to be there. So, the speed up that you achieve, the performance in terms of uh, the number of packets that is reaching the destination, the number of instructions that completes, once you employ a bus router or a chipper router is going to be compared with this. So, the performance slightly comes down, but you are going to have lot of area savings. So, just to summarize what we had in today's lecture, we were trying to understand that buffers that is a very crucial component in giving performance of NOC routers are really power hungry circuits. So, if we can get rid of buffers, we are going to gain lot of power and area savings. But since buffers are an important component that governs the performance of NOC, we, we have to compromise on certain aspects. So, at very low injection rates, 
this much buffers are not going to play a significant role. So, traditional input buffered routers are going to be replaced with bufferless deflection routers where we have pipeline latches only. We have seen two types of deflection routers today. The first one is completely bufferless and we have a total ordering sorting circuit followed by a sequential port allocation that is called a bless router. And then the second one is this total ordering is replaced with a fleet which is called a golden fleet followed by a parallel sorting circuit that is called permutation deflection network. So, these are the two standard bufferless deflection routers that is proposed a half a decade before. Still, it is a very active research domain. Our next lecture, we will try to see what are the problems of bufferless deflection routers. As for, of course, the main problem is we are going to have high deflection rate. Can we reduce the deflection rate by incorporating some kind of a storage inside? So, with this, we complete uh, this lecture. We will continue with uh, low power NOC designs, especially energy efficient NOC designs by reducing or by minimizing the number of buffers. So, with this I conclude, thank you. Thank you.